Hi, welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. I'm Chris Silvernail and I'm a senior consultant with Pragmatic Works. Today, I want to share some tips for using data flows in the Power BI service. I want to show you a simple process for converting your existing data sets into a data flow without having to do a lot of rework. So, why might you want to do this? Well, there's a few scenarios where this makes a lot of sense. Scenario 1. You've been in a self-service model for quite some time, and your organization is ready to take your BI initiatives to the next level by cultivating a set of highly reusable data into a single workspace for enterprise usage. Scott from the Fleet Inventory team has spent the last six months crafting this gorgeous Power Query that presents the vehicles and their availability dates. We'd like to take the data set that he currently has embedded within his Power BI analysis and in his workspace, and we want to turn that into a data flow that can be used by the entire organization. We don't want to start from scratch, right? We don't want to go into a data flow and try to rebuild the steps that Scott's done. If we do that, we're going to waste a lot of time redoing a lot of work. And secondly, we're probably going to make a mistake. So at the end of that process, we're going to find that our data sets don't match. And then we're going to spend half of our lives trying to figure out what we did wrong. We really need a way to copy and paste the work that Scott's already done. So scenario two is you're starting a new BI initiative and right off the bat, you know you're targeting a data flow for your final delivery of the data to the end user. The problem is you don't at this point in time know exactly where your data is going to come from. Really, you need to spend some time doing some prototyping, some experimenting. You want to experiment with pulling data from this file or this database. I know that in a lot of my efforts, I'll connect to three or four different data sources before I figure out, you know, what my actual source for that data is going to be. I'm going to pull it in from data source A, play with it for a while. Yes, no, maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. Pull it in from B, pull it in from C. Maybe it's a combination of B and C. I really don't know until I do it. I want to experiment, I want to prototype, and I want to be able to do that without having to go in and configure my gateway every time I want to create a new connection to a new data source. So from the Power BI client, you have a lot more flexibility to just go and connect to disparate data sources throughout your enterprise. In scenario three, if you want to build a data flow based upon a SQL query, look, I'm not judging, we all do it, but if you've actually gone out and tried to build a data flow and use the SQL server connection and then try to specify a custom query, well, you can't. I mean, you can, but you kind of got to go through the process that I'm going to show you in order to do that. The wizard doesn't make the SQL statement available for you to populate whenever you're authoring the data flow. Before walking through the process, I want to make sure you understand one thing about data flows and a requirement for the data gateway. The Power BI service needs to have connectivity to the data source for your data flow. If that data source is a SQL server that exists like in an on-premise data center, you're going to need to have your gateway configured so that the Power BI service has a way to get connected to the database. I'm not going to cover that. In this video, um, there's a lot of resources out there on the web that can walk you through that process, but just know that if you're going to make that connection, you want to have that gateway configured before you sit down to start authoring your data flow. Okay, so let's go over to the computer and let's start walking through the process. So here we are in Power BI Desktop. I've got a sample analysis set up here. It's got a couple of data sets, employee SQL in person, and um, we're going to want to move these data sets out into a data flow. So let's go ahead and click Transform Data to load our Power Query Editor. Let's go ahead and click on our first query person. And you can see there's several applied steps here that we need to pre reproduce out in that data flow. So in order to do that, we just go here to View, Advanced Editor, highlight our M, and let's go out here to our data flows, and let's create a new data flow. For this exercise, we're just going to add a new entity. And we don't want to start with SQL, even though we are it is hitting a SQL server, we want to be able to take the code that we have and paste it in. So we're going to start with a blank query. Highlight the, the code that it defaults in there and delete it and just paste it in our query. And down here in our arm from data gateway and click next. So there's a couple things we need to fix here right off the bat. The first one is this query is actually referencing <clears throat> a parameter. If we come in here, we can see in our advanced editor that it's actually trying to hit this DB server name parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm just going to create <clears throat> a new parameter. So we can go into Manage Parameters and click New. Um, this is going to be a text. And we need to set this to the value that we had it set to over here which was VM server 2016. Yeah, I had that right. And 
go ahead and click OK. So <clears throat> that will fix that reference. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to give it the credential to use um, to connect. And looky there. Let's name this to match what we have on our desktop. And there we go. That's all it took. All right, let's go ahead and convert this employee SQL while we're in here. Same process. Click on your query. Click on Advanced Editor. Copy. Blank query. Gateway's already selected. Since we've already got our uh, <clears throat> parameter set up, we don't have to worry about that this time. This is a native query, so it does give us this warning. You can read that. It can be unsafe and alter to the database. Um, make sure you know what you're pasting in here and running. Go ahead and click continue. And let's rename this query to employee SQL. Okay, and let's save and close that. This takes a minute. It's going to validate the queries. Okay, here we go. So let's save this data flow as Azure every day walkthrough. Obviously pick something that makes more sense. And let's go ahead and refresh it now. Okay, it's, while it's performing that refresh, let's come back over here to our uh, Power BI desktop and let's create a new one. I just want to walk through the process of connecting to these data flows that we just set, just set up. This is pretty straightforward, and this is really a lot easier process for maybe your business users or self-service report designers that aren't so technically savvy. Here they can just go browse the data flows that you've made available on the Power BI platform. So we can just click Get Data, Power Platform, Power BI Data Flows. Here's the workspace we were in, and here's my Azure Everyday Walkthrough. And you can see the two data flows that we just created. And here it goes. All right, so here we are. Now that we have these imported, we can work with them just like any other data set. Let's create a little table. First name, last name, and title. All right, that's all there is to it. If you want some more information, just general information about data flows and what some of the advantages are to using them, I suggest you check out Power BI Dataflow versus Shared Datasets by Bob Rubaki. Thanks for watching Azure Every Day. We'll see you next time.